Uh, you know what the- ooh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, let's clap it in. All right, let's do it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to On Fire Tonight What's with Josh up, and Tressa. We are very fortunate to be joined today by Christopher Pravdika, our composer, the great multi instrumentalist. He is about to go on tour. He leaves today to go on tour with Swans. He has a brand new We O album coming out soon. There's one out now and one coming out imminently that is available on Bandcamp and presumably other places too. Yeah, so check out We O, that's W-E-O-W-E. Christopher, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks guys. Uh, All right, good interview, everybody. (laughs) See you later. Thanks for joining us. Uh, You guys get your. uh, (laughs) You guys have your sodas, your little sandwiches, because we're having a picnic Mm -hmm. right now. See? Yeah, Yeah, we're having a picnic in the park. So nice out. Uh, Christopher, tell us what's going on. Where are you going to be later today? Maybe somewhere fun? Super fun, I bet. You're going to have the best time later today. Going to jolly old England. Oh, oi, oi, oi. Yeah. <laughs> one of the B towns. I don't remember which one. One of those Bristol, Brighton, uh, Birmingham, one of those B places. <laughs> nice. Not important. Are yeah, you not the important? Is it like a festival one or no, we have a you know, we have a we have a Brexit tour and we are <laughs> That's an actual thing now. It is? It's my it's, well, it's my first time in England since Brexit and uh, uh... So touring is not the same, you know, you can't, it used to be that you can just drive in and out, fly in and out once you're in Europe, but now, uh, now it's not so easy. Now it's a whole nother immigration you have to go through. So Uh, Jesus Christ. So we're doing a UK tour separate. Wow. England really cut their own dick off on that one. Just like the Jews. Just like the Jews. <laughs> the only Jewish thing I ever did. <laughs> Come on, Christopher. Night. Everything I met the moil, and that was it. Just by <laughs> virtue of being alive, everything you've ever done was Jewish. Yeah. Truish. Truish. You're a chosen one, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> you've been chosen. Uh yeah, I haven't been to England since they Brexited themselves either. So that'll be just a bigger headache than it was yeah, yeah i think so and, well we have uh it's a, we start with a rehearsal and then we uh have our first show and then we've got london in there and then there's a little at the end we're playing some festival i don't know which one though in switzerland some swiss festival in geneva don't remember the name that's a, i never to buy nazi gold yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we're right back to the U.S. tour. As soon as I get back, I we head out oh, to Texas. That reminds me, I'm, I got tickets for the Metro in Chicago. Oh, uh, for me and my I family. See you at the Metro, love yeah. that place. It's great. Sorry, I, oh, I would have listed you. I know. I didn't want to ask. That would be weird. No, not at all. <laughs> Like Why a, is that weird? That's like know. a nice slightly, thing. I don't know. It's slightly the opposite. No, feel always the door is open always in any city, anywhere in the world, always uh shoot you me know, a text. It's like all. you have a handful of those people on a list and you're like, Hey, I would like to take up space for you. Thank you. No, not a, yeah, we all get our we all get our allotment and I would you know, if my allotment was full by the time you got to me or I knew it was I had people ahead of you, I would just tell you. If I had the space, you're always, yeah. And in Chicago, you'd always, I don't have any friends in Chicago, so. Well, now you do, buddy. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) 
Uh, you guys want to play some Would You Rather? What do you got? Nothing good. All right, yeah, give us the worst one. Oh, okay, the worst one? You got it. Would you rather get your hand stuck in a meat grinder or a blender? What's the difference in my eyes? Yeah. Oh, I'd definitely go for the blender, 100%. Really? It's Why? Faster. Well, grinder is going to pull you in. The blender is going to spit you out. Oh, uh, good. As soon as you hit the blender, it's going to punch your, it's going to hit your hand back out and uh, not going to pull it down. Grinder is going to pull, keep pulling. Like a, a, what's it called? A tree thingy. What? Uh, they put... The chip, the chipper. Yeah, the chipper, the chipper. Uh, you can't get out of that once you're in. We've mm -hmm. all learned that. No. Experience. All those horrible videos of people getting their clothes, like some kind of machine that spins really hard and they get their clothes caught in it or the, their tie. Oh. Oh. Ah! <laughs> Scarf while driving. Can't get enough of that story. <laughs> Isadora Duncan, constantly referenced on this podcast. <laughs> because it's horrific and I can't ever not think about it. All right. So wait, what if you, what if you're like stuck in both the grinder or or the blender like getting punched out of it isn't a thing like you're either going to get blended to a nub or you're going to get ground to a nub well dude the torque the torque on a blender is just not strong enough to deal with it, it'll 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 cut out before by the time it gets to your uh your forearm <laughs> bone <laughs> well what if it's like a really high-end osterizer then you, then it's basically a grinder <laughs> i guess so what if it's just a small food processor? Yeah, then you're okay. You're just going to lose some skin. <laughs> uh, a spice grinder? Just a really little spice yeah. grinder. Yeah, like a coffee grinder? Yeah. yeah, no. yeah. You'll lose some fingerprints. What about a mortar and pestle? <laughs> yeah, you could save that one off. That's fine. That's just a massage at that point. Okay, you have to lose one hand or one foot... Mm. Which one and why? Foot. Foot. Which which foot? foot any foot. Well, you know that you can put those I, any foot. It doesn't matter. I, I go for. I have a. I'm right leg, but I have nerve damage in my right leg, so my left leg is stronger. I might go for the right foot just because it's the weaker foot. But uh, you can always put on those prosthetics. They're really good now. The hands are not so easy. That's right. way more complicated. And I, I have, uh, because of that nerve damage I got going down my right side, I recently started having some feeling, like weird feelings on my right arm. Uh, oh, dude. Which is fine. It didn't seem to bother me. But I, when that was happening, I was like, I realized that my right arm and hand are my most valuable physical possession. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't sure. think I would want to live without my, my right arm. Are you, so wait, do you do physical therapy or have you seen a doctor about this nerve stuff? No, I mean, it, it, yeah, it was, I had a surgery because of the, because of what was going on. Um, no, I don't do physical therapy. They just told me to stretch. If I, I went into physical therapy and all they did was do a stretch, <laughs> do this stretch for 20, and then they walk away and they do, and tell me to do another stretch. So it was just stretching. They don't like do the stretch for you which i always which i was kind of envisioning that they would like take my leg and like right you know, hold it in place because i can't do that stuff to myself i was hoping someone could uh yeah earn that money you guys bend me around yeah i, I think, think that'd be a great business to uh stretching <laughs> like where you just go stretch people because i don't think people like stretching themselves no there's a place up the street that just does people stretching you it's really like, oh, yeah great. it's like a masseuse a but they stretch you yeah i'm like oh. yeah okay. Love it. I don't want to, I, I can't bend my legs. It hurts so bad that I just can't withstand doing it to myself and then doing it over and like a, tomorrow and the next day I get, I get really like over that as soon as I start, but if someone else is doing, it, I can withstand it and sure. I can, my mind shuts off, you know, I don't like doing self-harm. <laughs> right. But it's also like you have to actually be in the headspace and think about it. Well, I do think about it as you're doing it make sure you're doing it right and every muscle is being whatever someone else did it for you, you can just sit back and relax yeah exactly. not give a fuck and withstand the withstand the, the pressure and the pain i also had a, a similar business idea i thought would be good as a 
petting and reassurance instead of massage for like relaxation, <laughs> just like a light tapping on the, you know, like and stroking the hair. It's like, so you're okay. Yeah. You're okay, buddy. Yeah. You're a good person. You're okay. Everything's going to be fine. Well, that's worry. like the, that's the higher level for people that are really into ASMR videos. <laughs> Would it be cheaper than a massage? Because I think that I might be able to do that. You know, just like a pat on the back, just yeah. like a. 30 minutes of reassurance, light, light padding. Yeah. yeah, like the back of the head, a little yeah. shoulder. You got yeah. this. Yeah. I know. Exactly. I have faith in you, man. You're great. I, yep. Sold. That does sound really nice. Right? Yeah. Very relaxing. Much more yeah. relaxing than the uh, massage. I'm saying. I got another. You guys skill. get me. I do. Yeah, I, I'm not really built to get massage. Like same. I am not a huge fan of having strangers touch me. Oh, me same. Gently though, not roughly. Like. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm not incapable of receiving and enjoying one, but like, you know, there's some people that like make that like part of their like normal yeah. existence, and for me, that's like an unusual thing. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for me, massage. I uh, <laughs> uh, I met with a friend the other day, and uh, uh, I, we were leaving, and uh, I gave her a hug, and she's like, "Oh, you're a hugger," and I was like, "I am absolutely not, <laughs> absolutely not." But I felt like this was appropriate and it was expected. So here you go, buddy. Oh, I'm a I total so. hugger. Yeah, I can actually. see that. That makes sense. I'm gonna read you another uh, terrible one. You guys ready? Okay. Yeah. And it's pretty obvious where this is going to go. But anyway, would you rather spend a year living at a nudist colony or within the Amish community? Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. Pros and cons. Pros and cons. Right, right. I mean, I'm going to say without even thinking about any of it, I'm going to say nudist colony because those people don't give a shit. And the Amish people, I think would, I think it would be hell to live in an Amish community. I think that you're dealing with almost the same like issues in either community. Cause both of them are like live by our rules uh -huh. and we have like a very set way that we see the world. Josh is like, I'm going to have a boner both times, both places. You got to not control me. Look, I'm going to have a three mile long boner in Amish town. What's it going to be like at the nudist place? I'm not sure. Flaccid. <laughs> I think I go nudist colony. I mean, I'm tempted to, to hang with the Amish. I got a lot of respect for the Amish. Sure. Do I want to live there? Yeah, don't want to live there. I don't think so. I don't think don't I have mind. real problems with either of these two things, but I'm not drawn to either of them at all. Yeah. You're not supposed yeah. to be. That's the whole point. You're uh, I tell you, I, I think the nudist colony is going to be a lot more relaxing than the... Uh -huh. You have to do a lot of work at the Amish town. Again, yes. They'll put you to work. Physical labor. I mean, if it's like an actual community where you live in this like commune of nudists, maybe the same you might have to do a lot of work but it's not going to be as bad as the amish and also you can have a cocktail or two at the nudist colony mm -hmm. i'm gonna need that if i'm naked all the time if i'm at the amish mm -hmm. place they're just gonna tell me to do more work or tell me not to talk or tell me to read a bible or and then also no cocktails so absolutely not mm -mm. agreed it's pretty, it's a no-brainer. Thank you. I thought so. But Josh over here, devil's advocate. I mean, I just think about that David Sedaris piece, <laughs> Naked, and how it was like being in hell for him. Yeah, well, I don't think you, you got to be uh, pretty relaxed going in. I don't think you got to be wound up and uptight going into a nudist colony. Cocktails would help. Right. You'd pretty much wasted the whole time. But and you'd be fine. Are they, well, 
Okay. Are these strict so wait, do, nude mm -hmm. rules or are these like chill out, you be as nude as you want to be rules? Because Good even, question. because as far as, I don't know shit about fuck, but I don't think that they have like <laughs> hard and fast nude rules. You but... heard it here first. Tressa does not know shit about fuck. True. I also don't think that I don't like, I don't want to be naked anywhere, not even in my own house. <laughs> but. I also 100% <laughs> never nude. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, I still, I'm going to go nude. If you're going to make me choose between religion and nudity, I'm going to choose nudity every time. Yeah. I mean, if I have to play by the rules of the community like that, uh -huh. it, where it's either Bible or nudity, I guess nudity it is. Yeah. You know, what the, if um, I got really into the Bible. I mean, I've never really given it a chance. You this could haven't. be my time. You could do that on your own, too. Uh, I could be nude on my own. That's also true. Mm -hmm. What about a year of biblical nudity? <laughs> <laughs> Is that when you rape your father and you have children with your own children and... Hey, I'm just quoting Bible scripture right here. Yeah, I mean, what you're describing is like an ideal scenario. <laughs> okay. So maybe. All right. All right, I'm all out of interview stuff. You guys have to talk on your own now. <laughs> peas, carrots, watermelons. Peas, carrots, watermelons. Um, oh, uh, so wait, dude, extra, you were telling us a little food. bit before we started the show about how many bags you carry on tour and yeah. how you deal with that. Can we yeah. get into the nuts and bolts a little bit? Because honestly, this fascinates me. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Uh, I kind of messed up this trip a little bit. But um, yeah, I have a, you know, get like my base in a case. I have a very specific, I always go for the shitty case instead of the very expensive case. Very expensive flight cases are very heavy. Uh, if I bought one, I would never need one. But what I always do is I fill it up. I'm always bringing extra stuff and I put uh -huh. it in there. So I buy like a cheapo case, I reinforce it. And then when it falls apart, I just buy a new one. The trick is not having to fall apart in the middle of a flight, <laughs> the middle of a tour. And uh, so the one I have now is, I'd say it's do, a little dubious, <laughs> and uh, but I got it. I got it pretty secure. Just as long as no one just completely smashed. Someone cracked it on the last the last flight Oof. it was on. They dropped something real heavy on it, and uh, it went through it went through where there was nothing on the other side. So, uh, but now it's cracked. So I, I'm just like I'll get it all shimmed up with foam and embracers and. And I got the bit in the base. I had to move how the base fits in because I have new equipment in the base and it wasn't fitting. And I had to like, uh, I had to I have to make it some brace to the base so it doesn't move around and then bang into the other things. <laughs> and I've got it all sorted out. It took forever to figure it all out. And then, then I have like lug that a bag of clothes and my pedals, which I carry on board and a backpack with like my laptop and my shoes. So that's four, four bags I got. They all strap on everything, but the base straps on my shoulders. How many pairs of shoes do you bring? Two state, like my, I wear my stage shoes and my, and just, a, and then a, another pair of shoes. I don't, so I don't have to wear the same shoes all the time. Are the stage shoes just for the stage and nowhere else? No, I wear them. I wear them in general, but like I don't want to wear them like all the time. Then it gets uh they get rowdy. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Because there's a lot of uh, you know, there's a lot of moving stuff, a lot of being around your feet, walking around, doing stuff, and then so when I'm doing like doing I wear my other shoes for like building the stage and walking around town and then I put on my stage shoes for the show and I'll usually have my, then my stage shoes will be on for the rest of the night. How much do you worry about like stuff getting stolen or lost? Uh, not a heck of a lot. 
Mm -hmm. the getting missing in the airport is always that can be that can be a huge problem that's why i carry my pedals on board because that that is something you can't um i can't uh duplicate that if, if that's like for for real gone a right. bass i can always get a, i can always get a bass anywhere and so if they uh my bass has never been lost lost but it's not shown up a few times and it's always made it I've never had to do this thing where, because like when you fly to Europe and you're going on tour, if that thing doesn't show up and then you are already off to the next city and yeah. they still don't know where the thing is, uh, it's yeah, going to arrive back you. at the end. Yeah. You have to arrange for it to meet with you somewhere ahead of, down the line. And that's, uh, that is a tricky, tricky thing. One time it did, it, they lost it, didn't know where it was. I had left it was Paris, left Paris. I was in Belgium and I was, they could not tell me where this thing was. And I like, you know, then you need to know where, where the send it. And, um, the next day, uh, on the way that we had another gig in France, not in Paris, but we had to drive past Paris. Soon as we were, were uh, driving past Paris, uh, they called and said, it's at the airport. And we just like passed the exit. We just immediately. Amazing. Yeah, just happened to be right in the right spot. Other, that was the one of the worst things that's ever happened, and I got lucky getting it. You lose your clothes, you lose your clothes. I don't care about that. They can have that. <laughs> I'll buy buy some new clothes. I've they had read. stuff get separated from me so many fucking times that I will not check bags anymore. Like I, I mean, I don't have like a big instrument to check. Uh, but like, I only travel with what I can carry on. I definitely suggest always getting there earlier than early, you know, get yeah. there at the beginning, be the first, be in the first ra group going and your stuff is going to, I think the word, the main thing that happens is a crowded flight, you're towards the end and you got big stuff mm -hmm. and it just gets pushed to the side. I have the, all the equipment is like a special doesn't go it doesn't go in oh, with the so right first, yeah. you have to take it somewhere else so if you're doing that at like the end like the end of uh the you know the what do you call it check-in the mm -hmm. like the last mm -hmm. minute it's more of a chance that it's not going to make it connect with your flight so i always make sure i'm there super early and that my <coughs> stuff is gone I'm not, usually it's always, the only time that it's been missing is when i've been late See, even that worries me because I need to be hours, hours early because I have anxiety. And I'm always afraid that if I check something in that early, they're going to be like, oh, what's that? I don't know. It's been there for a while. Who gives a fuck? I'm, I'm terrified of losing my shit because it's not fun. Especially if you're just going somewhere for like a week and you have packed so meticulously and then it's all gone. God damn it. Even just for a couple days, that fucking sucks. Yeah, I had a, I was going to my grandmother's funeral and they lost like my suit Ooh. and like, like the one bag that I shouldn't have even had to have checked. I called them like twice a day, every day. And then when I got to the airport to fly out, I was like, Hey, I called a bunch about that bag. And they're like, Oh yeah, we looked, we just couldn't find it. I was like, I can see it right now. And I marched behind the desk what? and like nobody stopped me or anything. I just grabbed my bag. I was so fucking angry. Wow. Damn. They just let you go back there. They're like, uh, uh, what are we going to do? Well, there's, Dude. you know, there's Apple tags now. You can always sure. Apple tag your stuff. Musicians are uh, wisely getting on the Apple tag train. Wait, what is that? Explain that, please. Apple tag, it's just a tracker, so you can okay. track your stuff. Like often they don't know, like when they lose it, they don't know where it is, and you can tell them. It's like it's in Barcelona. I can I can see that the, it's in Barcelona. So I see. Yeah. Or it's here at the airport. I know it's here at the airport, so let's find it. I, it's somewhere in this quadrant of the airport. And that makes it gotta be a lot easier to deal with when you know where it, especially also with uh, when your stuff gets stolen on tour or with the vet if you're gear gets broken into and you got apple tags that's a quick window of solving that problem before they figure out there's apple tags in it do you have apple oh, tags no i don't do it 
I haven't done it yet, but I've always wanted to do it. I mean, like, <laughs> I've also I've never had trouble this this much. I've never had trouble with it. But thanks for making me think about all the trouble I'm about to have. Sorry, man. <laughs> what a dick. I'm trying to game out the problems before yeah. they happen, so they don't happen. It's so much thought and effort goes into this issue of where the gear is, where it's coming from. Do I buy one in this country and have it sit that, you know, all this, you know, buying doubles of things. And like, I left, uh, I left all my cabling and all, and my in, extra instrument and a bunch of effects pedals in Europe. So I didn't have to, cause I was going right back and I didn't need it here. So that was smart and saved, saved a few hundred dollars. Uh-huh. And uh, that stuff is, oh, you know, a keyboard player in our band, Larry, he uh, he has so much stuff, so much more stuff. He has five, he has five check bags. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Plus his, you know, his own bags. So much stuff. Did you guys hear about the Frontier lawsuit that's going on? It's like a class action lawsuit. No, what is that? You know how you get to the gate and there's like the box that says, is your carry-on this big? Yeah. Uh, Well, theirs is much smaller than it needs to be. And also they were saying that their bags weren't fitting. Like people would come in and they'd be like, okay, let's go. And they're like, your bag's too big. You need to check it. Because if you check it at the gate, it's $100. So they put the thing in the box fits perfectly is not up over the box it fits perfectly and they're like no it doesn't fit and they've got videos of people everywhere having the same experience where they're just being lied to to their face with evidence right there and so they've got a class action lawsuit and uh they made me sit on the tarmac for like five hours once Mm. which i don't even think is legal anymore but boy howdy I, do you know what happened when you had to sit on the tar- tarmac yeah. for that time? They forgot to de-ice the plane, so they had to de-ice it over five hours. Oh. Mm. I would have preferred to do that at a Chili's Express, but thank you. Did you know that um, all of the time that you were sitting in that plane with the pilot and the staff, none of them are getting paid? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, they only get paid for when they're in the air. So like all the work that they do before the plane is in flight, that's not paid. That's just mm. like what they have to do, but, but not get paid. Hmm. Isn't that a weird system? It doesn't exactly not make sense. I mean, like you get, you've got the job that's a flight is this many hours, you're going to get paid for that many hours, but it's like all encompassing. Yeah. Right. Makes, but then you get hit sense. with something that wasn't your fault. Like you have to de-ice mm-hmm. the plane and mm-hmm. you're trapped there. Yeah. Along with Tressa, who's very angry. <laughs> Actually, pretty cool. Out. Like I really did not care because I was not at work. So I was like, it's fine. The people you around like, me. That motherfucker back there, he's not even real. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to say I didn't do that, but I was not rude about it he's not even (laughs) real (laughs) josh probably doesn't know what you're talking about do you know what he's talking about josh yeah that crazy lady lady. i just assume that you don't know anything is happening if the way he laughed he knew okay so some things listen (laughs) tressa i don't follow much except for black twitter and black twitter (laughs) is on that shit (gasps) Oh shit! Do you guys yeah. see the the Montgomery brawl? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. fuck! So Amazing. good! Oh my god! I can't very, stop watching it. Yeah, what, so much I teamwork. Did you see the? Did you see the the beginning? The someone there was a separate video of meeting up to the. Yeah. The There's like five different angles. Yeah. So many people took yeah. video. Good yeah. Job. Thank you. That was so very that was very disturbing to see like three white dudes beating on a brown dude on the ground like that. Who was doing yeah. his job? Yeah. But man, the Calvary came that's probably not the right yeah. term. But <laughs> man, it was so beautiful. It, Andy made a TikTok last night. He was like, uh I'm uh, this is amazing, but I don't really know what's happening. Can you guys give me an audio description? 
and oh the audio descriptions that are that are stitchy in that video are amazing it's so good it's so good that lady who got whopped in the head with the chair fuck her yeah yeah it was pretty it was, that guy got arrested right away i was then that guy that one guy punched that white lady square in the face with a closed fist really hard and immediately got arrested but not killed he didn't get killed right away yeah hey we're making progress it's somewhere <laughs> yeah it's somewhere montgomery alabama you're making tiny improvements <laughs> Uh, my favorite yeah, that guy better survive. no i think they're all out like everyone that got arrested got out already but my favorite were the three guys skipping up to the pontoon oh <laughs> yeah so good what's up guys you got a problem now you do <laughs> yeah that was a big one i just shared it with, with tammy last night she everyone uh Tammy's in Florida with the, with her family. I couldn't go because of this trip, but they mm. were all they were all talking about it, and she had never uh, she hadn't seen it, so I sent her all the relevant clips. Do they do like an annual family reunion type thing? Yeah, they, uh, there's always something in the summer at some point yeah, where everyone gets to get most not everyone obviously it's a huge family, but it's uh, mo most of the family. That's awesome. They rented a, they rented like a big Disney house and they're doing the Disney thing. Really? Are there like I'm a lot of Disney age kids? Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, it's all the Disney age kids are there and most of them. And uh yeah. Tammy's not excited about it. But <laughs> does a lot she of work. have to do Disney stuff too? No, I don't think she has to. She wants she would love to do the Star Wars experience, but not no, not without me, not with the, uh, and I don't think anybody else on there wants to do it. They have that really expensive Star Wars hotel immersive experience too, mm. that I think they're discontinuing because it's so expensive. Oh yeah, I heard about that. It's I've like a few thousand it. a night or something. It's something, it's a lot. Who are they know. expecting to rent that shit out every night? Come on, it's so bad. Yeah, Mark yeah. Hamill can't even afford that. <laughs> and that guy's a figure skater. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Mitch Gaylord. <laughs> yeah. We don't cover enough uh figure skating on this podcast but we really really should yeah we really should i'll make up an outline or something for us yeah that'd be great that'd be great no problem would you rather be a figure skater or a synchronized swimmer <gasps> less chance of drowning as a figure skater but mm. less chance of broken bones and yeah. as a, a swimmer guy I am really torn here. I think that like, they're both really hard exercise. I think that basically look like, it just looks cooler to do figure skating. Yeah. You kind of just look like kids having fun and playing when you're synchronized swimmers. Right. Although it's I know it's a cool. lot more complicated. Uh, it seems cool. I would rather be the swimmer. Nerd. Figure skating. Yeah. I All mind. I can I think about, I mean, you guys might both know, hey, you. Uh, I know yeah, you. yeah, I knew that's I what you were going to bring up. <laughs> I know you. I know you. That's one of the fun. I laughed so hard at that when I was a kid. And every time, and it just popped up in my feed not too long ago. And I still <laughs> super over. Martin Short was the only, I think the only time he was super funny was in that. He's. He, when he says, I don't swim, and then he thinks about it, and he says, I'm not a strong swimmer, <laughs> as though he didn't say the first thing, <laughs> is amazing. And his hair. <laughs> his hair is great. Yeah. Look like, uh, looked like the singer Radiohead in that thing. <laughs> A 
young Christopher Guest. Yeah, it was the beginning of uh, that was definitely the the first, like the idea of Guffman. I think so, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, hard to say. Like, is that before or after? Um, this is Spinal Tap. It's after Spinal Tap, before Guffman. And it was the mood, it's definitely the mood of Guffman, that thing of like uh, someone who, who Christopher Guest was playing the same kind of character, someone who's right. like, uh, he's, he's making this really terrible and but trying to make this like really <laughs> important thing uh, seem relevant and seem uh, like it's way bigger than it is. I don't know how to describe that thing. That mood that he was selling in uh, Guffman was right. A, a person who is a hundred percent intent and it intense about this thing, but his personal success. He might he might think that he's at one hundred percent, but he's actually very low. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> Like the world might view you as a five, but you view yourself as a twelve. Yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does that ring true? Yeah, I, it's like body dysmorphia. Really hard self perception is like really hard to figure out. A bit of overconfidence. It's hard to look, um, which was goes in her. both directions. Guys, I'm trying to figure out if I currently or recently have had or have had body dysmorphia so early days of the pandemic uh -huh. i like ate the healthiest diet i've ever eaten and i got like regular exercise and i had like i was like monastic and i dropped so much weight effortlessly i was just so anxiety ridden that i lost so much weight i was like as light as i was since like high school maybe junior high and at the time, I thought I was in amazing shape. I just saw some pictures of myself from then, and I look gaunt. I look skeletal. Yeah. Did I have body dysmorphia then, or now, or both? <laughs> yes. <laughs> End of sentence. I, okay. I feel like if you're at a certain point and you go to this other point that maybe it was a goal maybe it wasn't but you found it in your head you thought it was where you wanted to be and you get close to that and maybe overshoot it that you're like no this is way better so I'm great it doesn't matter it's fine I'm so great right now and then maybe you'll look back and be like holy fuck I had no no idea but am I just babbling like does that make sense like no that makes sense I, yeah, I don't know. I'm constantly, every time I go to the doctor and they weigh me, I'm like, holy fuck, I had 20 pounds more in my head. Like, it, we don't perceive, how, I don't think anyone, maybe, I don't know, most people, I don't know, perceive exactly what we are and what that looks like to the outside world. And I don't think, I think we all have an idea of what we look like in our heads. And it doesn't actually click until you see a photo, maybe when you're not in that experience then and there. I don't know. I... Yeah, because I think, well, you have body dysmorphia, even when you look at a photo, you're not seeing, you're not seeing it objectively. But, uh, you know, so I think also when you, if you're just, lo you know, just losing weight, it can be, you know, however your body naturally holds that weight. It can be weird when it comes off, especially if you're not doing uh, muscle work. You're not like uh, you're <laughs> all of a sudden you're revealing your stringy muscles <laughs> right. underneath. But if you were, I think you might like you did some push-ups while you're doing, you know, do some sit-ups, get to uh, pump up your muscles a little bit, and then uh, and lose weight at the same time. They might have like a might have felt a little bit better about how you. Uh, but everybody holds their extra weight. I think you, everyone should have extra weight. I hate when people don't have, not that I hate it, but I'm always like, what are you going to do when the food runs out? You're dead. Right. <laughs> everybody should have like a little, uh, little extra. That I gets think you people with extra weight live longer yeah. than Absolutely. people who don't have it. Yeah. Yeah. And people who eat less live longer. 
people who eat less. Yeah. But do they also carry more weight? You can do both. You can, yeah, you can eat less and carry a little extra weight. Right. If your body thinks that you're in a famine because you're not getting enough calories, it's going to slow down your metabolism. That's right. Yeah. If you do, if you do the, uh, do it, you can do it different ways. And if you, but some people just carry extra weight, you know, they just carry the weight no matter what they like, as soon as, unless they're starving themselves and doing tons of exercise to get like zero fat. Uh, but some people just have zero fat naturally. But I think the best is the middle, you know, having a little, uh, because I think running out of food is like a real thing that could happen in the next like uh, 20 years. Uh, yeah. And oh, things so are looking much. grim everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Hey, not to bring the tone down. <laughs> oh, what? No, it's Also, fine. okay, like b before I lost all that weight, mm -hmm. like slight, like slightly before then, I had been like really focused on marathon training. So I was like very in tune with like, what I was eating, how much exercise I was getting and like what I weighed. And I, at that time I was trying to lose weight because like the less you carry when you run, the faster you can go. And then when the pandemic happened and I, I didn't have that mindset, I just had full on panic anxiety mindset. I was losing weight with no effort whatsoever. Whereas before when I was like desperately trying, I could not. It was like, I could barely lose. Oh, really? fractional amounts That's... i mean i got i got i got down like low but like it was a totally different scenario like i i dropped 20 pounds almost immediately what's, wow that's a lot yeah yeah what's wild about that is usually when you're stressed out and it sounds like you were because <laughs> we all were uh it's a lot harder to lose weight because your body like holds on to cortisol which is like the stress yeah. hormone and it's like fuck we don't know what's gonna happen we're we're keeping all of this right now yeah and yeah you know that book the body keeps the score nope it's like a it's about how when you have a traumatic experience you, your body gets a shot of cortisol but if you can't express that it stores in your body so like back in caveman days you get scared by a bear you scream you shit your pants and you run mm -hmm you get half a mile away and you've already processed everything you need to, you don't even have to think about it again. But like, because we don't live in times like that and something happens and you can't express yourself the correct way, like you have cortisol in your body and then you might be doing some kind of exercise or stretch or something where you rehydrate the fascia that's got the cortisol in it uh -huh. and just start crying out of nowhere and you don't even know mm. what it's about mm. Mm. That's so like just a... beat the shit out of yourself okay. and yeah. something good comes out right. i wonder what kind of uh, effect acid has on that kind of stuff oh god well that's like an ego death so that's a good question right it seems like, you know, like the, I, what, when they always say like things like MDMA, ecstasy and acid as treatments for PTSD. Right. Because you get like, uh, you would start associating these traumas to regular, you know, like everyday life. And then the psychedelics like help you make the familiar thing seem unfamiliar and kind of break that, uh, break that bond a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I wonder if that, uh, but that's a, that makes a lot of sense what you're saying about the cortisol. The body remembers that stuff. Yeah. It's a record. You got to get that stuff. You got to get, get the wiggles out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get chased by a bear. Have a good time. Yeah. Which it's because it's, it sounds like PTSD what you're saying, you know, you get the, it's like, it sounds like what PTSD in that, in that concept is, is that it's, you didn't get, you, something bad happened and you didn't get to work it out you didn't you didn't uh take it to its full conclusion you, ju you just sat there right at that uh right at the precipice of it and it just stays with you i don't have ptsd <laughs> okay nobody said you did jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> i thought basically everyone in society now has ptsd are you saying you're completely free of it? 
I don't think I'm not I can't say I'm completely free of it, but yeah, I'm pretty I think I, I uh I think I dump things pretty easy. That's great. Is that Josh, are you saying like uh the theory that no from that place um that nobody can go to heaven because we're all guilty of everything because of society and how it works right now? Is that the same concept, same kind of concept as everybody has PTSD? Because I've never heard anyone say everyone has PTSD. I don't know what you're talking about with heaven. <laughs> you know, with that one thing where um, there's heaven and hell, and we had this conversation already, and it's, uh, you know. Uh, Makes sense to me. You know, like, you can't go, okay, if you believe in heaven and hell. You will not go to heaven because you own a smartphone and that smartphone was made by a slave labor. Like every step you, know you take, yeah, every step you take, everything you do affects somebody in a bad way, but you have no choice but to live life. So regardless, you're just going to hell. Um, this is not a theory I came up with. It's from a show uh, and probably smarter people than I know to think about and reference. But... We've had this conversation. I, I mean, personally, I don't have strong feelings about heaven or hell. Right. Uh, I just think that people should try to right, right, right. do their best and consider what they do and right. not support slave labor if, if possible. Well, I, know who's go I know which people are going to heaven. That would be the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> what about the nudists? <laughs> do they have smartphones? They, they might not have smartphones. They don't have pockets. <gasps> You're right. They got fanny Meanwhile, packs. the Amish can go on Rumspringer. <laughs> and then all is forgiven after. Yeah, that's the cool thing about being a Baptist is you just like... <laughs> Don't give a or, shit. Or, or a Catholic. You, know, you just say, like, I'm sorry. You do the thing and you get baptized again. You're like, all better. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, back yeah. to normal. Back to normal. Just keep doing that annually. Uh -huh. do whatever that is you want a pretty good year. system. Right? Yeah. I mean, Same when... with the Catholic. Say some Hail Marys and you're uh, back to normal. When I was growing up in the evan evangelical church, they always were like, you just have to ask for forgiveness and then it's you're fine. All is forgiven. So I'm like, well, what is stopping me for fucking going wild and doing whatever the fuck I want? And then I know I'm going to die in like an hour. Ask for forgiveness. It's good. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the difference between like an actually good person and <laughs> right. not yeah yes. right uh-huh you okay. that's why them that's why i got respect for the amish they don't play around with that stuff they's like they take it very seriously if they're gonna do it they're gonna do it and they're not gonna do half measures and and, right. and do, uh, do, tr do lawyer tricks to figure out how to beat the system and right if it's right yeah. it's right all day every day and if that's it's right. wrong it's wrong all day every all day, day every day yeah, some religious people don't believe in the like forgiveness and the that you got if you messed up, you're messed up and you're on the, you're on the bad side, and that's it. But then there's a, then the big question is then what's the point of living at all? Right. Once you do one thing, you're fucked. Yeah. Why even bother trying? I mean, I can see where if you have that mentality, you were brought into a church where you will will not be forgiven, and you made a mistake, like. I can't imagine what kind of fucking head trip that puts you on. Like, why even bother yeah. doing well, wait, anything? What, what is a religion that believes in no kind of forgiveness? I don't yes. I don't know if there is one. I think the whole point yeah. of religion is that like if you if you ask for forgiveness, if you if you atone for what you've done, right? Like Jews have Yom Kippur, that's the day of atonement each year. If you've done wrong things, like you make up for them, you apologize for them, you try to do better. I think, I mean, I, I think there's, so I don't know which ones are which, but I know that I've had this conversation with religious people and there are, there's kind of a line between like, uh, I, I don't know what denominations they would be, but they're like the, that theory of like, you can't just be like a rapist all year long and then go ask for, for forgiveness at the end of the year and be absolved of all your earthly sins. Uh, a lot of denominations don't like that concept, like the, the, 
the Baptist thing of like you can just be a mass murderer and then just go dip your head in the water with right. <laughs> be all all back to normal. Uh, so I don't know how I don't know which ones are which. So I, I, this is so confusing. I know that the Catholics are super into forgiveness, right? All you got to do is confess, right? Yeah, far I know. I know. I don't. Yeah, you get a little booth. And, you talk to a yeah. little boy. I mean, a little guy. Ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> hey. Ah. I mean, I think all I Christians, it. it's like baked in, like, like you have to just uh, accept Jesus. You can. You can have a transformative moment. You know, Saul becomes Paul on the road to Damascus. Um, I, I think one of the things is like if you get if you be, get right with Jesus, even though you did all these horrible things, that's what uh, for, you know. For a lot of these religion, the more strict religions, if you get right with Jesus somehow, however you do it, but you can't just automatically go like have someone uh, dip your head in the water. And then, and then everything is forgiven. You have to actually uh, get yourself right with Jesus, as they say. Get right with the Lord. They want. You can't just be like a. You can't just be Hitler and then dip your head in the in the waters and then come back, come and still want to kill all the Jews and, <laughs> and and marry really underage women. Oh my God, you're talking about so many people. I don't know the reference. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a big question, right? Like, are there things that, like, you absolutely cannot be redeemed from? Yeah, there are. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. All right. The answer is yes. All right. The answer is absolutely true. Yeah, but uh, that's, that's why that's why those religions that give you the the fake way out, I think it's, uh, it's baloney. <laughs> yeah, I mean, personally, I don't believe in any of them. I just truly, like, I believe from a non-religious standpoint, from a completely secular standpoint, that you can do good because you wish to do good and create a better world for everyone in it. And also that if you do bad, you can make up for that. You can take responsibility for that. You can try to do better. But I don't personally want to do any of that shit. I just want to fuck off and be an asshole all day. <laughs> I know. You're always pushing kids into the street. It's crazy, Josh. <laughs> Settle down. They're so small. They're so easy to push. <laughs> Their balance is all wrong. <laughs> Stupid kids. <sighs> Should we wrap up a uh, religious talk for the day? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I digress. No, I, I always I... go there. <laughs> No, I meant that's the name of our new show, and we should maybe wrap up oh. because we're almost in our... Oh, Religious Talk with Josh and Tressa. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> where we talk about stuff we're, that we don't know yeah. about. Yeah, we're just going to... Hey, what do you think of this? Oh, I don't know. I'll I'll talk about it, but I don't know about it. I have opinions, <laughs> but I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Broccoli's man-made. What? <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> Sorry. You can't drop a bomb like that. So are lemons. And bananas. Dun, dun, dun. I was thinking, uh, thinking about the, some, there's that island on, uh, off the coast of North Carolina some long time ago, some like randomly, some like lemon tree grew on one of these tiny, tiny little like pieces. And they called it like a miracle. They call it like God's like special, like y'all know that like, <laughs> Lemon trees don't just grow naturally. They have like people have to plant. They're made by people and they be planted by people. They can't. There's no like natural system for <laughs> no God put <laughs> lemon trees anywhere. Wait, is that true? Like, what did what were lemons cultivated from originally? Some other citrus fruit. Yeah, others. Or... Yeah, citrus. Yeah, it's, they split up. They put a right. bunch of citrus together. Yeah, I think oranges and nobody liked them. They... were originally yeah, a lot more fake. bitter, more orange like. None of our citrus that we eat are nothing are we natural. eat is what it used to be. Everything has been yeah, yeah. That's why everything's so fucking good now. Hell we yeah, made it that right. way. Yeah, we we yeah we made them good. That's a hundred percent what we did. Humans. That's we what fixed we fixed everything. <laughs> I mean, like a German Shepherd is like not really better than a wolf, but it's like better in your house than the wolf. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, like 
those bulldogs that can't breathe uh-huh. because we bred them to not be able to better is what <laughs> who made that choice and why do people keep making that choice and they can't give birth on the, their own they all have to get c-sections yeah. for real yeah the heads are too big yep oh, it's it fucking is. gross what they do to dogs and they're like two thousand dollars a puppy uh, you know what that's probably a low a low estimate for a puppy like that just get a yeah if you do like if you do breeding of any species you can make pretty drastic physical changes in just a few uh few go arounds yeah yeah <laughs> okay I take that's it why i've been terrible. bred to perfection mm-hmm. what does that mean what does that say about your parents josh what did they do the, they were almost perfect oh <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> And then with me, they broke the mold. Yeah, let's not do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mistakes were made. <laughs> Prototype never meant for mass production. <laughs> fair, fair. Um, we can't let you go without talking a little bit more about this new We O album. Ooh. Do we have any tracks that we could like slip in for, um, like, could we have like a sample that we drop in to this sure. possibly? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. I'll do that like on a, my airport. Like just a little blip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, have a, a label is putting it out in oh. a label called Mothland out of Montreal. If you need to get and, permission for that, don't. Don't. Yeah, uh, well, when uh, I'm assuming this is an air like airing today. I mean, yeah, uh, it, it could. You're about to go on tour. We're trying to be timely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fine. Uh, it was the first single is coming out in September, so that's soon. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I'll I'll. I'll I would imagine that would be the uh, piece of music. The record will be out in Dece- on December first on all the on everywhere, and a uh, couple and doing three singles before that. So, you know, you'll be hearing from me. You'll be hearing about uh, Leo. Yeah. Are you are you currently looking at or booking solo gigs as Leo? Are you performing solo or do you do it with other people? I'm Not doing it as a, just a recording project mm-hmm. as of now. Uh, I, I'd rather just do records and records and records. And um, it, all, it all boils down to, well, one living here in New York makes having a band very difficult. Right. Like anywhere anywhere else. But uh, then uh, traveling that band. Also, I'd say this mu- when I do this music, I'm punching above my belt. <laughs> Oh, playing okay. it would be a lot harder than uh, so as a, it would be a bit of a learning curve for me to figure out how to perform all the stuff I'm doing or what you what have to parts hire a band, do. right? You, yeah. you could you yeah. could get I mean, you happen to know some heavy hitters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's like, who wants to be in my band? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like, you know, when you record it, record that stuff. You do it in sections and you do it a lot of the stuff I play, I just play for that one moment that I recorded it and I never physically ever play it again. You know, it's not like I'm physically learning how to play all these things and learning how to perform it all the way through. I just do it and I do it in sections and and uh often I'm getting a take from you know something I've never played before and I just play it that one time and that's the take. And then uh, you know, then a year later I go back to it and I'm I've been working on it all along, but I never really fizz, like think about what I actually played. And, and then then you string it all together. I'm like, well, it'd be actually quite difficult to play all of that. <laughs> Even if I wasn't singing, it would be difficult to play. The singing part is a, is a that's where things get tricky. Singing sure. and playing bass is, is difficult. So I don't know if I would play bass. Listen, I, I can't know. sing, period. I can't remember lyrics. I can't imagine having to remember what I'm playing and singing at the same time. Yeah. Anyone that does that, which is so many people, 
Uh, yeah. Respect. I, I, I can't. You know what? Huh? You should just go to a nudist colony, find <laughs> Tristan there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> See if he's available. Okay. To fill in some gaps. Ew. Well, wow. One of the songs on <laughs> one of the songs on the record got named after uh, from one of our podcasts. Oh yeah? Nice. Yeah. From uh we, we, one of the episodes of Kingdom we were talking about wet nurses. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And so I named the song Wet Nurse. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, check out Christopher Pravdika on tour, online, and in your hearts. Thanks so much for joining us. This has been On Fire Tonight with Josh and Tressa. 